Ladies and gentlemen, AMD's Epic Tech Day is currently underway, and the company is very keen, of course, to respond to Intel's criticisms that its server parts are, quote, glued together, desktop parts. Why Intel chose to make those comments is pretty obvious. They are concerned that AMD are going to become a very competitive force in the server and data center market. Now, this is a market that I understand that some of you may not have a vested interest in. You may say, well, okay, but all I do is play on my PlayStation 4 or maybe I play on my PC and I don't really have any you know, interest in data centers. I don't walk into a data center regularly. I don't own a data center. I don't work at a data center. So why would AMD's performance and technology in a data center really impact me? Well, other than the fact that, of course, you are almost certainly using the technology of a data center on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be, let's say, browsing the internet, filling in online questionnaires and forms, perhaps even doing online banking, or even doing online gaming, of course, because most servers now are cloud-based. The fact of the matter is that Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, with its uh, cloud computing entries, with the uh, parallel computing cloud of GPU computing, this allows them to basically get a lot of money and that money in turn goes back into research into new products which eventually do benefit you as a gamer or you as a content creator, a 3D artist or whatever else you happen to be. So my name's Paul and we're going to be jumping into this. Now there is a lot to discuss and quite frankly uh, the videos that I have gotten this information from are from AMD's own official channel and I'll link their videos in this video description. Instead, this video is going to give mostly my opinion along with a synopsis of what they've discussed because if I were to go through all of the details, this video would be pretty lengthy to be totally honest. So the Epic 7000 series, of course, has up to 32 high performance Zen cores, 8 channels of DDR4 memory and up to ter 2 terabytes, excuse me, of memory per CPU. I just want to repeat that one more time. 2 terabytes of memory per CPU, 128 PCIe lanes, and a dedicated security system. Perhaps one of the more widely discussed features of Epic, and oh, by the way, yes, I caught the typo on my last video. Sorry about that. I spelled it E Y. PC. Must have just been a typo and then I just basically copied and pasted a couple of times over and it just remained in like the video so sorry about that. Anyway um, the major talking point of Epic is the fact that all of the processors have 128 PCIe lanes and all of them have 8 channels of DDR4 memory. Now when I say all I mean whether that's an 8 core 16 thread CPU or the 7601, which is a 32 core, 64 thread part. Why have they chosen to do this? Well, according to AMD, it's because they didn't want customers buying up the stack. So in other words, they don't want a user to buy, let's say, I'm just giving an example, the Epic 7451, because it has, let's say, 64 PCIe lanes, rather than, say, the 7281, which would have, oh, I don't know, let's say, 32 or 64 PCIe lanes, and perhaps only four memory channels, and they need eight memory channels, because they need additional RAM in there, whatever. So that was their feeling, well, that was their motivation behind that, at least according according to what they're saying here. Another thing, and I'm glad they've clarified this, and that is the TDP. So there was 155, 170 watt, and this was a recurring theme from multiple CPUs, including the 7501. So what was going on? Accordingly, this is down to power consumption depending upon the memory frequency you're running. So 2400 megahertz RAM means 155 watts, 170 watt means 266 megahertz RAM. Oh, and also this is the entire uh, SOC the power consumption is being noted for. So all you have to do is then add in figures for RAM, GPUs, and any additional cooling or storage devices. So in other words, you don't have to account for North Bridge, South Bridge, or anything like that. So there is a couple of different versions, essentially, of Epic. One is 
for multi-socket parts. So in other words, you can have, say, two Epic CPUs in there. The second is a single socket. Now, the reason AMD decided to do this, according to them, is from their research, 25% of OEM servers only have a single socket populated. Now, naturally, this means you have wasted efficiency and size of the board because, well, you have basically power consumption simply because those components are still probably being powered on. You have space issues because obviously those those motherboards are still that large. It's not like you can just use a chainsaw to chop them in half. So essentially you're just wasting space. So what they decided to do is provide a set of SKUs for one socket, the same capabilities as a multi-socket processor. So in other words, there's no nerfing. They've still got 128 PCIe lanes and whatever, but they've priced them to focus though they are just on a single socket. So the pricing's different, and according to them, I'm going to use their words, not mine, disruptive one-socket performance. That's a word that AMD seem to use a lot right now, disruptive. So Intel, of course, did call these processors glued together, once again, um, that caused kind of some ripples in the IT industry, and I could make a larger video on the one I did yesterday. I feel personally that Intel should not have done that. I think that was a really bad decision on Intel's part. Not only are they getting somewhat lambasted at the moment in the press, the tech press, and gamers are kind of laughing, but the other issue is that you're kind of bringing attention to your competitor because what a lot of people in the IT industry will do is to start actually looking at Epic or, in other words, their competitors. And that might be bad for Intel. I'm not saying they made the completely wrong decision because ultimately they do need to obviously push the benefits of their particular platform. But I feel that those that choice of words was a really poor one. Anyway, so... AMD, of course, were very happy to respond, and they decided to push Infinity Fabric, which they call a high bandwidth interconnect to scale devices together. Now, notice I'm saying they said or Intel said. The reason I'm saying this is because right now it is not in the hands of the average user. It is not in the hands of a wide uh, demographic of server owners or whatever. So ultimately, although we have a few benchmarks which have popped out and a few partners have said it's good, I don't want to say that it is great when we've only got AMD and a few other very, very controlled samples to kind of quote. So I'm going to, for the sake of this video, say that AMD said or whatever because high bandwidth, I'll wait for further real world testing. That's just how I'm rolling for this video. Anyway, they said they could have built a monolithic part, in other words, a whole part without you know any of the interconnects, it would just been a huge massive ass die, but they felt it was the wrong decision for what they were going for. Um, each die has two memory mod uh, channels, so each processor die inside of the epic, you know, shell if you will, has two memory channels, eight total, with a max data rate if you're running a 2066 uh, 6, is 21 gigabytes per channel, so that's 171 gigabytes per socket. Once again, two terabytes of, of memory total per CPU socket, which is absolutely crazy. Infinity Fabric provides 42 gigabytes per second of bi-directional bandwidth. Now, accordingly, but once again, according to AMD, they doubled the bandwidth that they needed within the socket. Now, this hope this helps with scalability and high throughput. So, if you do get an application which absolutely hammers a particular core, or certain applications which absolutely wreck uh, memory bandwidth, you've got well over what they need. So, even if they were to produce a larger number of um, processors on a particular die, they still shouldn't have too much of an issue if they were to do that, which I'm not saying they would. Uh, socket to socket interconnect, so that's let's say processor package A talking to processor package B, they have four, four high bandwidth links which connect between socket to socket and 38 gigabits per second bi-directional per link. So that's 152 gigabytes per second between sockets. So in other words, this is, you can have each CPU um, cluster basically has its own connection. And obviously in yet another video, there is multiple on their... Um, official YouTube channel, as I said, so that's why I'm kind of blasting through this stuff pretty quickly. 
they also decided to provide a demo of SEV, which also stands for Secure Encrypted Virtualization. I've discussed this a couple of times over, but basically they did a demonstration where a user uh, would enter, let's say, account details of a bank or whatever into an online form. And they did this on two separate machines, one, of course, using Epic, one using a Broadwell-based Xeon processor. And guess what happens? Of course, the Xeon processor was less secure. The reason behind this is because, yes, you can, of course, send the information via, um, you know, HTTPS and all of that stuff. And that's great. It is encrypted until it gets to the server. Then it goes into the system's memory. So basically, the example that AMD provided is let's say that you are a malicious administrator or you have a malicious administrator working or has access to that machine. Well, then they can basically scrape the data because they can simply access a virtual machine that's running on that machine. So big machine, big computer, uh, might have multiple virtual machines running. It could have 5, 10, 50, depending on the size, obviously. And that means, in theory, your organization could have someone in there scraping data. With this, it can't happen because basically that data is encrypted in memory. So you can't just essentially steal a whole bunch of customer data. That's pretty cool. Um, Obviously, this is going to require AMD to have a lot of independent testing. I'm not saying it's not been independently tested. I'm saying, once again, this is going to have to go to the wider world and, you know, for security experts and for people in certain organizations to really test it and really feel confident in it and figure out what weaknesses it has, how to, you know, if there's certain ways they can still get uh, access to certain data, what you know, basically if there is performance problems with it, whether there's bugs with it, that type of thing. So I don't think people are going to just jump on this immediately in some organizations. I think some will, because some will obviously see the benefits of it. But I will be really honest, I think in certain instances, they're going to be a bit cautious and they're going to want to see what the processors can really do. And I think that's really the only issue with Epic. Yes, I've mentioned AVX 512 a few times uh, in the past, but AMD don't seem too worried about that. Of course, that's what they're going to say because ultimately they're not going to really push one of the problems with their product. They say that the, the bandwidth, the throughput, and the raw performance of the CPU in many instances will get around that. Personally, once again, I want to see independent benchmarks across a whole bunch of different things. They have decided to provide a few benchmarks, but obviously these are ones that they're going to be doing pretty well on. Uh, Spec Inc. Base 2006 up to 47% higher with Epic 7601 versus a Xeon E52699A V4. The names of these processors, and this is an integer performance. The Xeon is Broadwell. And 2P floating point spec FP GCC compiler is up to 75% with the same CPUs. And accordingly, AMD are also saying that they're focusing on performance per dollar. This means that they believe the dollar value, um, so if you spend a thousand bucks, you're going to get equivalently a better, a better performance value of like 23 to 70% versus the Intel Xeon Broadwell stack. Obviously, when Skylake's, you know, Xeons become kind of mainstream and we start to see those filter down, AMD are still kind of, well, at least they're saying they're ready for that and they don't feel particularly worried that, you know, they're going to absolutely get destroyed in the marketplace. But once again, it's not down to AMD to, you know, tell us this. It's going to be a lot of independent testing. But while I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm very cautious and negative for Epic, because I'm not, I actually think it's really good, because even if they don't beat Intel every single test, because let's face it, that would be asking a lot, that's not the point. What they're doing here is basically offering a value proposition. And I feel that's very important, because if they can offer a product, which in many instances is as good as Intel, for a very similar pricing of Intel, that's basically means that they have something on the market finally and just for those who didn't know it's not like amd have never been competitive in the in the marketplace they have been previously for example we saw the optron line of server processors released back in like early 20 2003 i think yeah 2003 
and eventually those became incorporated in desktop products. I'm sorry, I completely screwed up what I was just going to say there. The Optron server oriented processor was released in uh, April 2003 and then many of its technologies were then eventually released for the desktop, uh, of course becoming the Athlon 64. So that's very important because AMD do have a track record in the past but this is going back quite a number of years. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Uh, as I said, if you are interested in a lot more stuff, you can check out the video description and it will take you to AMD's own videos. But I wanted to provide this so you can at least have some level of insight, at least in my personal opinion. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.